Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is Dylan Holmes from Well Your World, and he has, let me show you, well, I'll show you one at a time, three brand new seasonings. One is called Voodoo, one is called Calypso, and one is called chili lime. They're all fabulous and they're all SOS free. No sugar, no oil, no salt, no MSG. This one I put on fresh mango. Yum. Delicious. Okay. This one I used in a chili recipe. This one, I'll be honest, I didn't use because I'm allergic to black pepper, but I'll get Charles to try it on something. But every blend he makes is delicious. Even if you're not following a salt-free diet, it doesn't matter because his spices are amazing. And he's going to show you three recipes today, how to use them. Please welcome Dylan Holmes. It's so good to see you again. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me back. It's been a little while. I'm happy to be here. I know it has been too long. Well, that's good. I feel like I see you because I watch your show and I watch your and I, I go to your cooking right. classes. And that's why I feel like I see you. But you're right. You haven't been on in a while. So what took you so long? I feel like I see you for the same uh, reasons on your live streams, but we don't, don't actually hang out. No. Here it's we are. Weird. finally. It's <laughs> weird. Yeah. So what are you up to now in terms of how many of, uh, you know, blends that you have? We have like nine different blends, I think. We have 27 different products now. We've got our dry blends, like our cheese sauce mix, which is our most popular product. We have a banana pancake mix. We have our various bottled sauces and salad dressings. We've got a non-fortified nutritional yeast. We also sell a date powder as a sugar replacement. That's like a whole ground dates, which is actually in the Voodoo. Our Voodoo seasoning is the first one we've used a little bit of our date powder as a sweetener. So that's really cool. Um, but yeah, we have like 27 products now. More to come. But this was our, our three, our three uh, spice ones you showed there are our three new products. So we won't have new ones for a little while now, but I get a lot of requests all the time. So it's great. Did you ever think you would become a, what do you call it? A spicy air? Yeah? What, what, what do you call yourself? I mean, you're an entrepreneur, but I mean, did you ever think this would be your, your job one day? A spicy air? <laughs> I don't know what you call it. It's like a sommelier. I, mean, I don't have a crazy. name for myself. I really don't know what I am. I'm not a chef, but I have a cooking show. I'm not a spicy air, but I have spices. Uh, I'm not a product air, but I seem to have some pretty healthy uh, and helpful SOS free food products. But yeah. I kind of just figured it out the, along the way. You know, I'm an engineer. Maybe yeah. maybe we could call myself that. Uh, that's what, my actual It's amazing, training. Dylan, is like these, it's not that your products are good for people that are avoiding salt. They're just delicious. Like you, it's okay. Even if you eat salt, you're still going to like the products is what I'm trying to say. Definitely. And I, we eat some salt, you know, we eat some salty olives sometimes. We sprinkle on a little bit of salt, like John McDougal says is okay. Uh, but we, putting the salt into our products, never. Because usually these processed food products or these, I should call them prepared food products, uh have just too much salt so we've eliminated that we've made it work for everybody and if you like salt well it's really easy to pick your favorite salt and sprinkle it on top if you want a little but it'll still be way less than what you're getting if you just eat these processed food products that are on the grocery store shelves that are never compliant with our way of eating you know Absolutely. And I always feel like salt is just the laziest seasoning, you know, it doesn't take much ingenuity, you know, you can pretty much just dump a ton of salt on something and make it taste good. Uh, unless you're accustomed to not eating that much salt, then it would taste terrible, which is why the chili lime is what really out of the three started it. We started working on this one first because Reeves loves chili lime on fruit. Like you said, uh, if she's making a mocktail with a little rimmer on it, she likes it. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to make a fajita sheet pan today using it. And the blends from the store are just so salty. And this one's really good. It's got real lemon and lime both in it to give it that citrusy pop. And it's not very spicy at all. Uh, we use a little bit of red bell pepper ground up in there, too, just to reduce the heat. So it is got a nice chili flavor without burning you, uh, you know, like our sriracha might or our sweet heat might is actually kind of hot. Whereas the chili lime really is quite mild. So we're, we're going to jump in and we'll do that one first. I'll make you a fajita sheet pan meal, which is really fast and easy. Just a little bit of chopping. Then we're going to use the Calypso that you haven't tried yet uh, because it does have some black pepper. Uh, this one is kind of like our Cuban Caribbean style spice blend. It's really good. It's got some citrusy 
flavor, a lot of garlicky flavor. And then it's also got like, time, you know, some of the uh, wintry flavors, some of those Thanksgiving flavors, like a poultry seasoning with the parsley, sage, uh, thyme. I'll list off some of the ingredients when we get to using it. Um, and then we're going to make a freezer jambalaya, a really fast, you know, because the first one we're going to chop a little. And I want to show the people that don't like to chop a really super easy jambalaya with our voodoo seasoning, our Cajun seasoning mix that is just throw it in the pot and be done with it because that's how I like to eat. I like chopping too, but I don't want to do prep every single meal. We eat a lot of meals uh, because we don't really, you can't really eat out if you're looking for health, you know? I so love that. if you're ready, I'm ready. I'm ready. And I just want to point out that your seasonings are the only ones that are approved by Dr. Alan Goldhammer and sold at the True North Health Center. Yes, we're very proud of that. Uh, he carries a lot of our products and he's ordering more all the time. I send him uh, a load on a pallet over to True North. And he called me the other day. He says, you know, I was about to be pissed off with you, Dylan, because I walked in and there were no products. He says, we actually sold out of them already. So I, I've been having to replenish his stock more and more often lately. So it's been great. We're very happy and excited. That's incredible quickly. because he is the strictest one of all. If you got the gold hammer seal oh. of approval, you know, it's got to be compliant and good. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So with that, let's start a fajita sheet pan. How about it? Sounds good. Okay. I've got a couple of camera angles here. There's our cutting board. Uh, when we get to the jambalaya, we'll, I'll have a stove cam too. Reeves is here. Say hi, Reeves. Hi, everybody. She is, uh, she'll be helping us go on our, we're going to be going live on our own hangout on our YouTube channel at three o'clock Pacific, right? So she'll, we'll be here hanging out all afternoon. And then we have a live cooking show tomorrow. So let me just tell you really quick before we start, actually, down in the description box of this video, AJ put some links. Uh, we don't, we offer a free trial of our cooking show to everybody who comes to us from Chef AJ. So there's a link there. Uh, and when you are a member, even if it's during the free trial, you get 10% off of all of our products. Uh, so then that is the way to get the discount if you want it sign up for the cooking show. There's a link down below. No discount code needed, nothing like that. Uh, and then there's also a link to these recipes that we're gonna do that Reeves will put in the chat box. I don't know if you were able to get that in the description box because I took forever on that, um, but we can get it out to people one way or another. I'm working on it while, while, you've, while you're cooking. Okay, um, anything else I should mention? Uh, we do free shipping to the USA on all $50 orders or more. So that helps. You also and have wonderful t-shirts for sale, like the one you're wearing. We do have a whole lineup of uh, ridiculous punny t-shirts, such as Reeves's Kale Yeah, and, <laughs> and many others uh, for sale on the site too. And we've gotten a lot of requests for like aprons and tote bags. So we'll do some more accessories to go along with our food stuff because people are fans of the channel and what we're doing. So that's great. Thank it's you. incredible. Well, congratulations. It's just such your meteoric rise to oh, wow. success has been so fun to watch. I'm flattered. Yeah, it's been really exciting and a lot of hard work, but hey, so we're going to chop. We've got one little red onion. I've got a poblano pepper, which is, you know, I, it's a little bit spicier than completely mild like a bell pepper, but it's not like spicy, spicy. Jalapeno is actually spicy. I love a little bit of cauliflower on my fajitas. It's just so good. What have I dropped? An onion. And I love some bell pepper and mushrooms. So we'll do a red, we'll do a, this is an orange bell pepper. We'll do some mushrooms. And then I love to throw on some chickpeas because all of, all of what I've shown you so far is not really starchy. So I like to throw in a can of chickpeas too. So let's get to chopping a few things. We don't need to do all of this, but all, this is pretty much the only one where I'm out of these three where we're using lots of fresh veggies. So I wanted to give you a variation. I know some of your watchers, some of your viewers at least love to chop like me, right? Anyway, if anybody has any questions, hit us up in the chat box, AJ or you Reeves or whoever can read me some questions. Well, yeah, one, one question was what kind of engineer is Divil, Divil, Dylan, I bet it's civil, but you're not a very, you're not very civil. I'm not a very civil guy, I find. So that didn't work for me. I'm an electrical engineer. My old, my old life was in the solar industry. I had a solar business where I designed and installed rooftop solar buildings, parking lots. Uh, but it's really hot here. So I got kind of sick of that. And I started making videos once I figured out how to get healthy. And 
that's what took off, I guess. So I kind of transitioned from doing uh, engineering type stuff. And now I just make videos, do our live cooking show, make products, put out things that help people to have an easier time of adhering to what is a challenging diet for most people, especially when they're starting. And in a world where everything else is pretty much non-compliant with health, uh, we need some hacks and shortcuts. And that's what my products are. They're just leveling the playing field. It's, it, it's ketchup, but it's health, a healthier version. It's all these things that everybody else has access to, but we can't usually get them without this oil and the salt. So it's nice to have finally some products for everybody else. I'm just slicing up an onion now, a red onion. And I'm just throwing all this stuff that I'm uh, chopping up into this big pot next to me. And so this is just a red onion. I just, I'm, I'm pretty fast at chopping, but if you're not, you know, just be patient, practice. I do, we talk a lot about chopping, like in my cooking show, we did one of our episodes last month, we did a whole chopping instruction and we have a cooking show tomorrow too. So if you wanna sign up at that link, the Chef AJ link below, join us. Uh, we're making three different 20 minute meals tomorrow on our show. And so it'll be fun. Here's a jalapeno. For jalapeno, I just kind of chop around this core and I just like cut it out. Cut it right out from around the center and then boom, you could dice up the jalapeno. I'll make it in nice thin strips like everything else. I love spicy food, so I'm not too afraid of jalapenos. I'll go after those serrano peppers too, you know? And we're just gonna throw everything in this pot and we'll season it with some chili lime and throw it in the oven. It's the easiest fajitas ever. That's a jalapeno. Here's a poblano. This is that one that's like pretty mild, not too hot. Any questions in the chat so yes, far? Yes. Yeah, well, yes. From Tracy, are you ever going to make a SOS free mustard? Because you know what? I wish somebody would finally make a yellow French's ballpark mustard because that's- You and many others have uh, requested that. So thank you for that request. Yes, I want to. I don't. Ha I haven't started developing that one yet, um, but it is definitely on our list. I'm going to cut those a little bit shorter. And it doesn't need black pepper, by the way, because French's ballpark mustard does not have black pepper. No. Do others? Um, no, but I just want to make sure because that's really a product I need. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure it doesn't have black pepper. Yeah, because I love it on, on sweet potato fries, yellow mustard. That's the only thing I use it on, but I, I just. I yeah, we, uh, we don't have another request I got just today was for like an enchilada sauce because we've made an enchilada sauce from scratch in a lot of our recipes. And although like none of our, the sauces that like you make and I make are hard to make, but it sure does save time when you can just grab a bottle. And when you just wanna to put together like a five minute meal, it's just really helpful. And, and what I noticed when I first started eating this way and talking about it in my YouTube videos was that, you know, too many people are struggling to, to find the things that make it really easy. Too many people are, are really just overcomplicating this way of eating and it can be so much simpler. And I'm just trying to get these products to people to see that it can be so much simpler. And then it takes some of the intimidation out, I think. So that's the goal. Cutting up a little bit of cauliflower. Uh, I'm just taking off some of the big stems, but you do have the cauliflower flor florets, whichever way you like, and they fall apart. But I like some nice big bite-sized pieces. I like a very full taco or a fajita, i rather. So there we go. Um, I think that's enough. I don't probably need that other bell pepper because I use the poblano. So let's go ahead and we'll throw the chickpeas in. This is just one can of chickpeas that I rinsed and drained to so like a cup and a half. Like I said, we've got all the, the recipes are in that link. And then boom, I got the chili lime. I also like to use my Fiesta Fire Blend. Um, this one, it's called Fiesta Fire Blend, but it's really not that fiery. It's not too spicy. It's very tasty. So I use a mix of both, more chili lime than this one, but I'll tell you the difference between the two. And that is that the, the chili lime is mostly the chilies, the citrus, and a little bit of the red bell pepper to keep it from being spicy. Whereas this one's got some marjoram and oregano, some cumin, also a little bit of chili pepper, but it's a much lighter, fluffier um, herb kind of blend that I really like. Most of the Mexican blends that I find at the store 
are just like more like a chili lime. They're more just like chili powder. And I wanted more herby flavors, some of the green. So I really like the Fiesta Fire Blend too. If you haven't tried it, uh, buy both. <laughs> Lisa so, says, which of your blends are spicy? Uh, the Fiesta Fire Blend, I would say, is at least more than a mild. Um, but I don't know, Reeves, can you, are, are any of the spice blends spicy? I don't think they're really spicy. Voodoo has a little kick to it, but I wouldn't call it spicy. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that any of them are like hot. And I'm putting in, I'm, I'm pretty liberal with this because this is our flavor, right? We're not adding salt. We're not adding oil. If this was anybody else, they'd use way less seasoning and way more oil and salt. And I don't roll that way. So let's grab the monster spoon and I'll just give you a view here. I'm just gonna stir this around. I didn't add any liquid. Everything should coat just fine. And you want like a nice red color. So if you stir it up and it looks like everything's got a nice coating of seasoning, then maybe you're done. If not, then sprinkle on a little bit more. I take the lid right off and just shake it right out of the bottle. But that's because I'm just used to uh, not really measuring and just shaking it out into my hand. There, that looks pretty good. So I probably used a few tablespoons total of seasoning and that's it. I don't have to do anything else. Um, if you like things really garlicky, you could add more garlic. If you like a really strong cumin flavor, you could add more cumin, but you know, this is great for us. Uh, we first did this recipe on one of our live cooking shows a, a few weeks ago and it just came out so good. So all I'm going to do is dump this onto a couple of sheet pans. Boom. There's one. And all we're gonna do is throw it in the oven for 20 minutes at 400 and they'll be just fine. Some people, 20 to 25 minutes, let's say. Some people like them a little bit more cooked. And that's it, spread it out evenly and we're ready to go. So I'll throw these in and we'll move on to the next one and we'll taste everything in a little bit. All right, any other questions? I'm looking, just nice comments about how much people love your product, love the huh. cooking show. Wonderful. Yes, we, we went through a lot of changes last year with the growth that we experienced. And I had to build a whole new warehouse to store more inventory because every time I'd come on Chef AJ's channel, we'd sell out of all kinds of things. It was a disaster. Right. Now we don't run out of things so easy. Right. Uh, <laughs> Shannon wants to know, is the chopping show available to watch? Oh yes, all of our replays. We've done what, 86, 87 shows now? And uh, all of the replays are available. So even if you're only a member for a month, for example, you can go back and download all of our PDFs from the previous uh, episodes. You can watch all the videos. We make a PDF like recipe download, much like Reeb's made for this, these three recipes. And uh, you get all of that. Plus you get your discount, 10% off. All right. Do you ship to other countries they are asking? No, I tried shipping to Canada for a while, but they just added a $16 per order fee. So it's like $40 to ship an order to Canada. So it's pretty much a 100% fee on an average size order, which is terrible. Ah. So I don't have a good solution for international right now. I'll be looking for more, but uh, they do have some mail forwarding companies such as Planet Express, if you've ever tried that for the international folks. But uh that's kind of where I am right now on that. I hope to have some better options soon. It's really tough with the customs and the duty and all that stuff. It's crazy. Okay, let's make this uh, cauliflower bites. This one my mom came up with that was really good. And we're gonna use our Calypso for this. Again, this is like our citrusy garlic kind of seasoning. And here's what I've got. I've got a cup of chickpea flour. Uh, you can use whatever your favorite flour. If you prefer whole wheat, you can use whole wheat. Reeves doesn't eat the gluten. So we usually use chickpea flour for this type of recipe. And we're essentially making cauliflower wings, cauliflower bites, whatever you want to call it. Very, very easy. We take a cup of the chickpea flour, a little bit of garlic and onion powder. There's already a lot of garlic in here. But again, if you like even more garlic, you can add some or you can omit the garlic because it's in the Calypso. I also throw in a little bit, some nutritional yeast, for this a couple tablespoons worth we do sell a non-fortified nutritional yeast looks just like that we call it nooch and it's for sale on our site no added of the vitamin b's and all the folic acid and stuff that they put in most of them you can fortify your own life if you need to you don't need to get it from your nutritional yeast and the flavor is really good and if people tell us we have the best price too so that's great 
So check it out. And then I just take like, I, uh, this looks kind of like, look at it. It's, it's really got a yellowy sort of a, a rich, deep color. Um, let's get for probably a lot from that garlic. And I probably put in a couple of teaspoons, maybe a tablespoon worth in here. And the citrus is so good too. So we'll whisk that together just like that. Dylan, somebody said in the chat that we need to name our baby after Chef AJ. <laughs> uh, Chef. Chef, no, I named your name. I said Sherlock should be the baby's name, whether it's a boy or a girl. Well, you know, AJ does feel responsible for our having a kid. Yeah, if it wasn't for me, you guys never would have met. So I should be able to pick the name. <laughs> AJ Holmes is okay, though. It's okay. AJ Holmes doesn't sound too bad. We met, Reeves and I met at uh, Chef AJ's conference back in 2019, right before pandemic changed conferences. Forever. I, I know. I just poured in a little bit of soy milk. Soy milk is my favorite. Some people prefer almond or other non-dairy milks, but plain, plain, plain soy is my absolute favorite because I add flavor to things if I'm if I'm, I mean, I almost never like drink soy milk as a beverage. I really, it's for things like this. And we added a lot of flavor. So I try to avoid those soy milks that have the added sweetener and vanilla and all that BS. I try to get rid of that and just use that plain. Trader Joe's has the best soy milk, in my opinion. Yep, just two ingredients. Cheryl says, Dylan, what is the chef life of shelf life of your Nooch product? Oh, that'll last, geez, I mean, the Nooch will last like forever. It's any of the dry stuff. I put a two year shelf life on everything, but any of the dry mixes, as long as you keep them dry in the pantry, you're gonna be, they'll last a long time. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, none of the dry stuff needs to be refrigerated or anything, just like our bottled stuff. Once you open them, uh, they'll need to be refrigerated, but they're also very shelf stable. They'll last as long in the fridge as any condiment you've ever bought before. So you don't have to worry about that. It's not like, um, cause it still has the right acidity to keep its shelf stable. It doesn't need like salt, for example, to make it shelf stable. That's different. That's like if you were trying to ferment things, maybe you would use some salt, but not here. These are not fermented products. Someone's, so now I'm, mm -hmm, go ahead. Someone's asking, are these sold in stores? No, no. So I'll post the link where you can get them. AJ's got a link down in the description box. We do all online. It allows us to do, a lot more uh, without <laughs> putting stuff in stores is a lot of extra work. It's a lot of babysitting. And uh, so we prefer selling online because we can handle our customer service directly with you too. And it just, it's really been a streamlined process that we have by selling online. And we do offer the 50, $50 gets you free shipping. So it shouldn't cost you any extra. Um, so that's helpful as well. Yeah, uh, True North is the only <laughs> store that carries our stuff. So now I'm just gonna make these uh, cauliflower florets, whatever size you want. How are we doing on time? What time do we start? Oh, we're fine, don't worry. Where do they, I haven't been to True North since they started carrying it. Is he putting it like in the front case in the lobby? I, I think so, but I asked him for a photo and then he didn't send one and I forgot to ask again. So I'm not quite sure, but I do believe that they are in that lobby area where he used to have those cases um, if he still has them. So cauliflower florets. Any other questions? Is it florets or florets? Uh, maybe both. I like both. I'm happy to accept both. So I've done about a half a head here. This looks like plenty. And now for the messy part, I've got an air fryer basket. I'm gonna use the Breville over here for this because I can air fry real easy in it. I put a piece of parchment down just to save on cleanup on the mesh. And this is all we got to do now is dunk them. So I can use, what should I use? Maybe I'll use a tongue. We bought that air fryer after visiting Chef AJ's house. Yeah, it was AJ that finally convinced us to go after the Breville. So here's, let me get you a close up here. I am, this is nice and thick. You want enough to where it, you don't set it on this. Oh, I'll move to the left a bit. You don't want to set it on this air fryer basket and then have it leak out all over because it's too liquidy. So keep this batter pretty thick. You want to coat them. The other thing my mom likes to do is she'll take these and she'll roll them in quinoa flakes 
before she puts them in the air fryer basket. So that's another way, another thing you can do. But this is this is great. I don't think it needs it. And you know it'll give it was really cool. Um, I don't know if you know Carly from Plant You. She's got like the number yeah. twelve book on Amazon right now. She uses rice paper for her cauliflower. Oh, is that so? Isn't that interesting? I'll have to check that one out. We did we did get hold of her book uh, recently, so we I haven't had a chance to look through it, but yeah, she's she's making waves. She's a TikTok star. Never, I've never even seen a TikTok because I don't want to add anything else to my life. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen one TikTok. I've never seen an episode of. I'm trying to think. I've never watched the news, Star Wars. I, if I'm afraid, if I get TikTok, that's all I'll do. Uh, it's you know I can see what what you're saying because it is addict. That's why I'm so happy that Reeves is our Instagram person because I used to get stuck on Instagram with all the plant-based people and you could just spend hours on there. So I had to I had to cut back personally a little bit. So now Reeves is the addict in the house. Did I get that right, Reeves? Yeah, but Chef AJ would be great on it on tiktok you would be pretty funny on tiktok i don't know i just said one more thing i mean what's the next thing what's going to be the next one after tiktok i'll go to that one it, well yeah you'll be dealing with this your whole life aj they're going to come out with new they're not going to stop coming out with new things just because you don't want them to anymore <laughs> don't i wish social media would just go away except for you're you. on we're on social i know media i know right i know it's now. crazy that i just said that i know it's a magical place social media has enabled us to have this business. It's been unbelievable. To, I feel like, well, when I was at least shipping, actually we do still ship internationally. It's just through those third parties, right? Now I can run a na nationwide business or even if you wanna go that far, call it a global business from my living room, from my little office, from home. And it's amazing what the internet can do for us. Check these babies out. They are going in the air fryer. Or what are we doing? Four, fifteen for like twelve to fifteen minutes. We'll see what happens. So it's okay to use parchment paper in your air fryer. I've never done that. I, just... I haven't had any problems. Sometimes the paper gets a little bit charred in spots, but it's never uh, stick to the food or anything like that. So I've never had any issues with it. Okay, so that's two. Oh, I didn't set a timer on that fajita. How long has it been, you guys? Anybody paying attention? I haven't. I mean, I've been paying attention to you, but not the but time. It's the nice thing is it's very forgiving. Uh, any of these recipes, well, the cauliflower bites, you don't want to burn them. But the, this um, fajita is very forgiving. Uh, you, you can obviously overdo it, but it would take a while. Because the mushrooms, a lot of them, the mushrooms and stuff will give out some juice. So you, you've got time to check it and make sure. So I don't, I don't worry too much. Um, all my recipes are very forgiving. Uh, you know, I, I hardly, I hesitate even to call them recipes because they're really more like meal ideas. Um, they're really quick, easy, throw together things that I think most people, once they've been at it a little while, can just use their intuition on the amounts. We, we talk about, we need to come out with some cookbooks and we're hoping to have our first one in the next couple of months. But we talk about doing a, just a cookbook where we don't really do amounts. We just kind of say a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Here's an ingredient list, but let's not focus so much on the amounts, uh, so much as the, the vocabulary of ideas, because that's what we all, I, I feel like struggle with the most is just keeping it fresh, new, not getting bored because everybody else gets to go to the new fancy restaurant and eat all the garbage and think that they're doing a good job. Well, we have to be a little more innovative, you know? And that's what helps with, that's why the products help. So now let's make a jambalaya. Any other questions while we're transitioning here? Jambalaya, where did that word come from? That I don't know. If anybody knows, let us know. And Reeb <laughs> said, I want to birth the cookbook before the baby. <laughs> that's funny. Sharon says that cookbook sounds like my kind of book. Oh yeah, the one with no recipe amounts. I know, right? Yeah. Okay, let me grab some stuff out of the freezer. Well, this is the thing that's special about this meal is it's just throw it all in and don't worry about it. We're not going to do a saute step. We're not going to add the garlic a few minutes after that. And then this screw all that. We're just throwing everything in 
turning it on, bring it up to a boil, let it simmer. So the flavors all come together for 10 minutes and eat. And I like to make, if anything is worth making, it's worth making two days worth. I'm not much of a big batch prep where, where I'll like, uh, a lot of people who follow us like to do big batch prep, say on Sunday, and then have all their meals for the whole week set up. Me, I'm a little bit less of a planner around the food because for me, it's more like make, have everything on hand, um, like the vegetables that are always in the fridge, et cetera, and just come to the kitchen. Uh, if you need to look at a list of your 10 favorite things, you can, but usually they're in your head and you're like, I'm just going to make that. And then I'll just make a big pot of it like we're going to do for the jambalaya and I'll just sip on it all day long uh, because I'm working here all, the, all day. Reeves is here, she'll eat some and we just grab a bowl, eat at our leisure. And then we'll come together again for something more formal at dinner time. But like our lunches and food throughout the day is all just, plus Reeves is quite pregnant and uh, eats much smaller meals more often. So it works pretty well. So this is a good size meal. Let, let me get the frozen stuff out now. I've got this, we, I, what is with the supply chain right now? I had to go to like four stores to get everything for this. Tell me about Which it. Normally I would only have to go to one. I'll explain, whoopsies. This, this, I'll show you this as well. Okay. So there is at Walmart, there is one, a blend here. This is a, fro they call it seasoning blend. Uh, and that's the, the Walmart brand one. And it's got some celery, bell pepper, onion, and it has a little bit of parsley. I don't really care about the parsley. What I really care about is the bell pepper and the onion. So if you don't find one with that already, and the celery is nice too, I guess. You could also get one with uh, carrots. They make one that I saw today that I was going to show you as well. This is their mirepoix mix from Kroger. So this was the fries, <laughs> the fries store brand, and it has carrots, celery, and onion in it. Any of these will work, or you can just use a regular bag of onion and a regular bag of bell pepper. Um, most places have a lot of different options, so just get whatever works. But cooking with freezer stuff can be so helpful, especially if you don't want to chop. The, and the quality is just as good. I mean, okay, maybe there's a slightly measurable difference between making it fresh or making it on the stove. But at the end of the day, if you taste test the, this and a version with fresh veggies that weren't frozen, you're not going to notice much in a dish like this because it is a jambalaya. It's just a big one pot stew. So I'm going to throw in not the onion because I've got these seasoning blends. I'm going to throw in two of these because it's like the equivalent of using one bag of onion and one bag of bell pepper because they both have both. So that's what I'll start with. Any questions about frozen stuff? Any, any favorite frozen products that you guys like? Let us know. Um, I, I don't do a lot of freezer cooking, but every time I do it, I think to myself, man, I should really be doing more of that. And uh, it's, it's a matter of just building, forming habits, you know? And knowing these simple meals so that they just come to the top of your head when you're ready to actually eat. So I put in two bags of the seasoning blend. The, this is another cut okra frozen. The texture is actually really good. I was thinking that it was going to be slimy and gross, uh, which is what some people complain about with fresh okra. But this was great. So I have a bag. This is a 12 ounce bag of okra. The other ones were like 10, they're always usually 10, 12 ounce bags, most things. And I'm going to throw this whole bag of okra in. So check out what it's looking like so far. We've got the seasoning blend in there. We've got the okra. So you can see the bell pepper and the onion in there, the okra. I'm going to throw in two cans of kidney beans that I've already rinsed and drained. I just put them back in the can to store there. Um, so I don't always use a bag. Here's a bag of organic mis mixed mushrooms from Whole Foods. That was the only place I found the frozen mushrooms today. Normally they're at every store. So I don't always use mushrooms in the jambalaya, but I am today because the, this is a mix of white cremini, portobello, and shiitake mushrooms, so I couldn't pass it up. Sounds too fancy. You Look know, have you ever tried the frozen okra in the air fryer? It's really good. Oh, I bet that's great. Reeves loves to do air fried broccoli. 
I never thought of doing it with the okra, but I bet that's delicious. It's really good in the air fryer, even for people that don't like okra, because any degree of sliminess is completely mitigated. Yeah, yeah, okay. Then I've got, this is, you can buy frozen brown rice most of the time. Today, I only found it at Whole Foods and at TJ, TJ Maxx, Trader TJ. Joe's. <laughs> Um, Trader Joe's always has the best price on the frozen rice that I found. And I usually put, I think two, I might put three in this. I can't remember, but once we get to stirring it, I'll know, but I think I, you can see, this is a big Dutch oven and it's getting full. And then I got some no salt added diced tomatoes. So I'll throw a can or two of those in. You seeing how this works? It's real simple. Y'all question for Reeves. Will you do natural birth or epidural? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm going to try for all we can do is, you know, imagine what's going to happen. What actually happens when it happens is another story. Yeah. Of course she wants natural, but yeah. <laughs> sometimes you just never know what happens, I guess. Tomato paste. I got a few tablespoons of tomato paste going in there. So what do you guys think of this? You can all do that. Then we got the voodoo. So now's when you can either add a whole blend, uh, a whole bunch of your different kind of Cajun spices, or you can save time even more and use our voodoo. And this is where I just literally wing it. I will take, you know, call that a tablespoon and I'll just do like three of those. And then we'll, once we get it going, maybe I'll do a little more. And once we get it going, I'll test it and we'll see if we need to add more. It's very unlikely that's gonna be too much considering this is such a big pot. And again, here's our date powder that is used in our voodoo as a little bit of a sweetener. So that's the story there. What do you think? Should we go to the stove? Anything else I need to throw in there? Oh, I'm gonna prepare one more can of diced tomatoes because I think I'll probably want it, but we'll do that at the stove. Okay, let's do it. So here's our stove cam. Again, this is what you're experiencing now is just like our cooking show um, that we're gonna have tomorrow that we do twice a month as part of our membership. This is the veggie stock that I like, by the way. This is the Pacific brand. It's a low sodium, not a no sodium, unfortunately, but it is oil free. And the flavor, the, just the ratios of the veggies is obviously just right. The, there are many others I just don't like. I don't like the Sprouts brand one because it has oil. So it's hard to find. Uh, there's one I found with no, Kitchen Basics makes one with no salt, but I found that it was uh, not delicious. So I stopped using that one. It's really easy, of course, to make your own veggie stock if you want. And then just stir this around. Once it starts to get heated up, you're gonna have way more liquid in here. So be careful adding, I added four cups of veggie stock, but be careful adding much more than that at first because we wanna get up to temp and let this start to loosen up a little bit. All these veggies are gonna give off a little bit of juice. So don't overdo it on the, on the liquid all at once. I did four cups so far and we'll keep track if we're gonna add some more. I do think I'll, I'll uh, get this other can of tomatoes in there though. So let's grind that up. What else, anybody else? Show, Dylan, I wish you did your show at noon so I could watch it. Cause sometimes it's at noon depending on the time change. Right, uh, Once next month, a month from now when we switch back, it'll be 12 o'clock instead of 11 o'clock your time. Okay, let's throw this in, get this up. I gotta get those fajita veggies out cause it's time. Could you do that in an instant pot, they're asking. Absolutely you could. Let me explain that in just a moment. I'm gonna grab these fajitas out so that I don't burn them like I was saying. It's been at least probably 25 minutes now, I think. Okay. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. Let's look at these. Steaming veggies. We're going to have a mukbang on our channel. Yeah, course. we're just going to eat on our hangout after. What's we're a done mukbang here. exactly? What does that mean? It's a Korean word, and I don't have any idea what it means, but I know what it, I guess, I don't know what it literally means, but I, it usually means that you're hanging out and eating in people's ears during a video. <laughs> Did I get that close? Is that everybody else's interpretation of it? So far, it's mine. It's fun, but you have to not be annoyed by the sound of people eating in your ear. Like, listen to this. It's eating a large quantity of food. If that bothered you, then you don't want to be around for a mukbang. <laughs> a 
Okay, let's, uh, we'll try these in just a second. I want to go make sure I'm getting this uh, good and stirred. See, you are already, it looks like more liquid. I did add one more can of the tomatoes. So I made it two cans of the tomato. You can see that this will last you a couple days, um, you know, depending on how many people you are in the family, but this is plenty. And then you can make this into a little Tupperware, portion it out, take it in for your lunches. If you don't have to go out for lunch, like to work, so many people get to work from home these days, then it's even easier, even easier. You can just leave this on the stove all day long on low and just suck from it all day. It's the best. Working from home is pretty nice. Yep. Sorry for anybody who doesn't have that option. Okay, we gotta be getting close on those, but let's make a couple of fajitas and give it a taste. I've got some simple corn tortillas. I'll get a plate not eat on the cutting board like I normally do. Okay, let's spread out a couple of tortillas. Which uh, tortillas are you using, corn or flour? I usually always use corn. Uh, the flour ones are kind of hard to find without the oil I found, unless you know a brand. Plus Reeb's is gluten-free, so corn just works for the family more easily. And we're in Arizona, which is, uh, I feel like, the corn tortilla capital of the world sometimes. <laughs> um, plus I really like using corn tortillas to make chips in the oven. So I'm, I'm more accustomed to corn, um, but I know- So you make like, chips in the oven? I just use my Breville air fryer. It's very quick. Same thing, same thing. Yeah. I, well, if we're doing only a few, I'll do them in there, but I have a bit of an appetite. So the batch of tortillas I can make in there is too small for me. Got so it. I usually, what I do is, you wanna know? I'll show you. I don't know if I, yes I do. This is the brand of tortillas that I really like for chips. I'll show you the, the label and I'll show you how thin they are. So this is called Arizona brand. They're not from Arizona. They're made in like Texas, but they do sell them at a few stores here. And they're really, they're complete. They don't have any added salt, which is awesome because it's quite rare to find a tortilla without the salt. And they're really, really thin. Like these are like paper thin, see that? And so what I'll do is I will just walk up to the oven with this bag. I'll put 15 of them on one oven rack, turn it to 350. And I'll just, as soon as it, about two minutes after it gets to 350, they're done. So that'll be my 50. And then, so the oven will have essentially heated up two minutes and then I'll just turn it off and they're done. And that's how long it takes. Cause these are so thin regular, these other ones over here, they'll take longer, but um, that's my favorite way of making chips. So I always have this Arizona brand tortilla around. Unfortunately, many of you probably won't be able to find this brand, but the thinner the tortilla, the crisp, the more like a restaurant chip and Mexican food is my previous addiction. So if I can, chips were my thing. If I can replicate a nice crispy chip, then I will not long for the oily, salty garbage ones that kill you early. You know what a good brand is? Have you ever heard of um, Mi Rancho Thin Credibles? No. They're like 35 calories each. But what I like about them is like you said, they're super thin. Thin Credibles, is that what you said? Yeah, they're called Thin Credibles. And I, what I like is because I'm not that picky about things being organic, but for corn, I am. And so it is organic mm. and it's called Thin Credibles. Okay, I'll check that one. Where do you buy them? I buy them at Clark's. It's a store around here, Clark's Nutrition. Do you have that? I don't know. I don't think I know that one. You know, I, I've seen them online too. Mm -hmm. So now I'm just going to take, so I've got my, is this too hot to touch? No, we're good. I've got my, my mix here, my tortillas, and I'm just, remember it has these nice roasted chickpeas on there. This, I still wasn't about to burn these. This could have gone for a few more minutes, but like, let me taste the cauliflower and just tell you. It's soft and tender and perfect. I would, you, you didn't need to go any longer than what we did, but you could without destroying your meal if you forgot about it. So then I'll just dress up these tacos, fajitas, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, I like to put on either, you could squeeze on a little more lime if you want to have that really fresh lime. You could, you could put on more uh, chili lime on top. Um, and then you could put on a little bit of your favorite salsa. Unfortunately, we don't have a Well Your World salsa yet, but that is 
probably my highest requested item. Um, so I am working on that. That one is uh, under development. So I hope to have that one out for sure this year. So I'll just squeeze on a little bit of lime. Really, I love a limey, a limey roasted veggie. And then we'll just do, you could, you could chop up a little bit of cabbage. Uh, I love like a green or a red cabbage chopped real nice and thin on here, but that's it. You could take a, if you didn't do the chickpeas, you could do a can of black beans. We're doing kind of a burrito bowl meal as one of our 20 minute meals tomorrow. So tune in if you'd like to see another variation, but let's have a little taste. You know what, Dylan, I'm guessing that when you do a salsa, it's going to have to come in glass, but if you do a mustard first, which is what I need, it could come in plastic like the sriracha. I'm probably going to switch the sriracha to glass too. Oh, I really wow. like the, I love the sriracha bottle. I hate it. It's so easy um, to squeeze. It's easy to squeeze, but I don't like the plastic. You can't cook things in plastic because that would be a problem. So you have to get the sriracha at a lower temperature before it goes into the bottle. And it's, so it's a lot harder from a production standpoint to work with when you're still a small business like me. Um, so I do think that we'll end up using it doing it in this kind of a bottle. Plus I won't have to get the, I, it won't be quite as acidic, which will make the flavor a little bit more neutral for people. So, I mean, people love the Sriracha. I'm not complaining about the flavor, but I think that the glass will allow me to produce it more easily without running out. If you remember, we were out of Sriracha for like six months because of this bottle thing. And it was a real pain. These are delicious, by the way, super tasty. So I might, if I did a, a mustard, I might still do it. Whoops, my tortilla is falling apart. I might still do it in glass and maybe in a jar. What if it was like a jar, like a salsa jar with a spoon? Would you like I, well, mustard really, like that? Because I like to make a zigzag squeeze over my fries. Mm -hmm. So I don't have it figured out yet. I got to get the recipe first. Mm, 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 mm. Super good. Reeves, would you like a taco? Yeah. Here you go. We were talking in the chat about how, I don't know if you mentioned when you make the tortillas, you just put them in whole and you don't cut them into the triangles. Right, I don't cut them into triangles um, unless I'm trying to be fancy for somebody, like I'm entertaining or something. Otherwise I leave them whole and I break them when I eat them and I dip them in things, right? So I really like eating things on a tortilla. So if I make like a jambalaya or a Mexican thing, I will definitely love dipping with a tortilla. So I just break them and dip. This is coming along nicely. It's not quite at a boil yet, but once it is, I mean, we had all that frozen stuff, remember, that we needed to heat back up. So just let it, don't, don't be too impatient because you don't want to burn it. You can also just cover this with your lid like this, and you could just put it on medium or medium low to bring it up to a boil. Um, if you're like, say you wanted to just start it and walk away, kind of like the Instant Pot, um, oh, I didn't answer that question, by the way, with the Instant Pot. So this, this just looks so good and it smells so good and the color is beautiful. I love that dish. Um, yes, everything we put in there, including the, cause that frozen rice is already cooked. Um, if you were using dry from scratch rice in the Instant Pot, you would have to go too long and all the other veggies I think would be a little bit too cooked. Though you could do it, it wouldn't be like the worst thing in the world. You could use fresh, you know, dry brown rice. But if you use the frozen bag rice, you could throw everything in the Instant Pot. That size would probably need like the eight quart Instant Pot. That's gonna be too big for the six quart even, I think. And then you just turn it on for like high pressure for three minutes, probably three, four minutes, do a manual release and there you go. So that would be really, really easy. If you use fresh, if you use dry rice, you might have to do like 20 minutes, which will obliterate everything else and it'll still taste good. So have fun with it. We gotta check on these bites. Let's get the bites. Reeves loves dipping in our Indian sauce. It's like her favorite. Uh, it's just like, it, we call it an everything sauce, but it, it's a simmer sauce, it's a dipping sauce, it's a condiment, whatever. Where's my pot holders? Here we go. Oh man, that was like the perfect time on these, I think. Look at these, they browned up just beautifully. I haven't made these in a while. We're a couple of days late for Super Bowl. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Yeah, we're a little late for Super Bowl. Those look amazing. These look beautiful. Okay, let's let's get a little ramekin and we'll do a dip. We'll do a dip and taste. Wouldn't it be nice to have a blue cheese that's vegan SOS free to dip it into? 
<laughs> well, I'm working on another one that we get tons of requests for is a ranch dressing that you've asked for too. And we are working on like a dry mix for a ranch. Here's our Indian, that's what it looks like. Let's do a little dip. Mm. They are crispy, but not, I could have maybe gone longer if I wanted to get the cauliflower crispy. Mm. The flavor is excellent. The Calypso makes a really nice citrusy kind of flavor. It's really good. Definitely garlicky. The chickpea flour is really nice and light for me. I don't like like a heavy feeling after I eat something with like flour. Um, so I really like chickpea flour for that. I don't know what it is, but it seems like it's just less flowery. I don't know. You know, when I make cauliflower wings, I lightly steam my florets first because it cuts down oh. on the cooking time. Oh, interesting. I'll try that. Here yeah. <laughs> I'm still eating the fajitas. <laughs> this is my good. favorite sauce. I dip all our fries in this too. I like the mustard, the sweet mustard and the sweet heat. Remember AJ when we were at yeah, your that, house? Yeah, that's the best. I, I agree for fries that I like that the best. You can mix those two together. Here, I'll give you a couple more. You want a plate? How are we doing on time? Anybody have some other questions? Let me look. Oh, no, you're jambalaya. fine. You're fine. I got to give it a few more. Ev everything looks scrumptious. Good. My taste buds are going crazy. Yes, they like so, a blue cheese dressing and ranch. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't finish what I was saying about the ranch. But, but first, this is right up to a boil now. So now is when I would, you can see that this is perfect. I didn't add any more liquid. Remember what I was saying? This is plenty juicy now. It just needed to sit and get up to temperature and it released a lot of liquid. So it looks like there's not a lot of juice at first, but then it opens right up and this is just like the perfect version. Um, okay, what was I saying? So the ranch dressing, I'm gonna make a dry mix that you would just blend up with, you know, you could choose your fat, like you could blend it with hemp seeds, you could blend it with beans. If you don't want the fat, you could blend it with avocado and make like a green goddess type of thing. So it's gonna be a pretty neat little blend. Um, but I, I prefer that I'm always trying to find the least common denominator version that everybody's going to like. And if I put hemp seeds in it, then I've cut off the people like you that don't like the fat um, or, or any other number of things that I could put in it. So I just can't decide. Plus, it will be a trickier because it's creamy. It is going to be a trickier one to bottle up. Um, but we'll, we'll keep experimenting with a bottled version. But I like the dry version right now. And we're also working on a dry blend of a veggie stock. I get a lot of requests for veggie stock, but if I took a container like this, filled it with liquid and shipped it, I'm, I'm just shipping water across the country, which is quite expensive. And why not make something that will go a lot longer and you can just take a tablespoon at a time out of a container this size and, and whisk it, just whisk it with water. You can make a sipping broth, you could use it for cooking and it's really tasty. I'm thinking of a ver I might do two versions, one with that umami flavor that comes from the nutritional yeast and one without, because lots of people prefer without the, the nooch. So I might do two versions of that. I don't know, I don't know yet, but we're still working on the final recipe. Okay, let's taste the jambalaya and that'll be our third one. Did you like the um, citrusy, the Calypso flavor yeah. on these? It's really, <laughs> of course, these cauliflower bites you could use with any one of my spice blends, any, favorite no salt blend. This is just like a blank canvas that you can dress up any which way you want. So don't be afraid to do chili lime in this or the voodoo in this or what have you. Our galaxy dust is really good. Our stardust, you know, is like our salt substitute, uh, which you can spring. I use it for your cauliflower bisque. It is like the best in your Chef AJ cauliflower bisque. Um, who, may, anyway. who comes up with the names for their spices? <sighs> You know, I don't even remember how we came up with Stardust now, but we, we. Sometimes we let the rumblings pick it in our hangout. We do often take it to our, our community. To, they've named several of our products, but I can't remember why, how we first got to Stardust, but then we did Galaxy Dust because those were the two that we kind of consider like our salt substitutes, not just a no salt seasoning. So those two kind of are like a more like a table blend, you know, like you sprinkle on the food in place of salt. And they're both quite different from one another. Uh, okay, let's get over here and grab a bowl. 
Dylan, Bella was asking if you make your products at home. No. Oh my gosh. We used to. That was, thank goodness we grew out of that. Uh, the first couple of products, the cheese sauce and the gravy mix, I used to mix it up in this big food grade mixer. It looks like a cement mixer, but it's for food. And uh, it was an absolute, it was such a mess. I did it down in the basement and still the powder would come up the stairs and just coat the whole entire house with cheese sauce. <laughs> so it was bad, but the demand, I just couldn't believe it. The first month we came out of that cheese sauce, so many more people bought it than I anticipated. And I was thinking to myself, man, I should have made some products sooner, but, uh, it wasn't, it was only a few months later. So I, I only did that for a few months and it's still traumatic. <laughs> the way that it went all over the whole house. I wore like a, a respirator because it was so dusty in there. And oh man, that was crazy. That was 2018. We don't do that anymore. <laughs> Luckily before I was here. We have a certified co-packer, contract packager who makes all of the products to our specifications. And so it's all very, uh, very proper, prim and proper. Um, but no, we don't make them here anymore. Thank goodness. I just received the truckloads of them. So here's our jambalaya came out beautiful. Uh, you could sprinkle on a little stardust too, for to, like I was saying, give it a little saltiness, but we use, remember the voodoo and it tastes like voodoo, super good. I might let it simmer for like 10 more minutes. It's a little crunchy, some of the veggies still, but the flavor is great. Uh, I think you're really gonna love it. All we did was throw a bunch of frozen stuff into the pot and how easy is that? And now you can just sip on that all day long. I just grabbed bunches of little bowls. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. And you did everything in less than an hour. You can too. I know. You're doing Make those 20 minute meals tomorrow too. We're doing three. Everybody seems to love our favorite episodes of our cooking show are the ones where we are doing really fast, easy meals for people. It seems like, cause that really, adheres most to our style of YouTube video for our recipe videos is just get in, get out. You do not need to be in love with cooking to be healthy. You don't need to be in love with cooking to cook. Uh, and I'm trying to convince as many people of that as possible who are trying to get healthy. And uh, I think it's working. Well, you make it yeah. so accessible. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Yeah, we would love for you to try out our products. If you'd like to sign up for the cooking show, you'll get 10% off. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email me directly. I answer every single email. I never miss an email. And the email is hello at wellyourworld.com. All the links are down below in the description box of this video for the products. Uh, we've loved the support we've always had when we come on Chef AJ's show. I, I, uh, I hope we can come visit and do an in-person one someday soon. I hope so too. Thank you guys so much. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back Saturday at three when we will be talking to one of the producers of the new documentary, Milk, that's being produced by Susie Amos Cameron. You got to see it, Dylan. It's really good. I'd love to see it. I saw your email and I, will, I bookmarked it. Great. Take care, everybody. Thanks.